Hello and welcome back YouTube family. Today we are going to be making a cloth envelope decor piece. When I make a sewing project, I like to use tissue paper to make my pattern because I feel it's easier to work with. Now this was a piece that I had laying around, so I like to start with it crisp. So I go in with my Off Nova mini iron and I give it a good press to make it a little less wrinkly. Once I have the tissue paper all pressed out, I fold opposite corners together and then I do it again to find the center of my tissue paper. Once I have the center of my tissue paper, I will fold in opposite corners to the center of the tissue paper. And then I will fold up from the one side, which that will be the bottom now. And I press it down with my hands and it keeps the crease. Then I try to go in with my paper crafting corner rounder. That didn't work, so I just ended up going in with a pair of crafting scissors and rounding the edges. This step is not necessary. I will let you know that now. Once I have all of my creases, I will set that aside and then I come in with these linens that I had picked up a few years ago at a thrift store. I get a lot of my material from thrift stores because I would rather repurpose. So I just take my iron over the creases of the linens Unfortunately, it didn't iron as well as I thought that the mini iron would to get out all of the creases. So I brought out the big guns and heated up my shark iron. I do like this iron, I just don't like the water spots that it leaves when I'm ironing it with the steam setting. Now because the linens aren't very thick or sturdy, I take this iron-on backing and I cut it to the width and length that I need and just simply iron it right to the linen. Once the backing is ironed down nice and secure or all the way around, <laughs> how you want to say it, I just pull off the paper backing and put on the other piece of linen that I have ironed out already. Make sure that it is smooth and, and all of the backing is covered. And then I just go back over it with the hot iron on dry setting. Actually, I should have said that earlier. When you iron on the backing, you should always use a dry setting. You don't wanna steam that. Once the two pieces of linen are secured together by the backing, I just go in with some material scissors and that just means scissors that I only use to cut material. And I cut off the excess pieces of linen. No, I don't throw those away. I will stick those back in my stash. You never know when you could use them again. And then any pieces that weren't as secure as I thought once I started moving this around. I just go back in with the dry heat setting and repress it. Then I lay my tissue paper pattern down on top, making sure that I leave a quarter inch seam allowance the whole way around the pattern. I know it looks like I cut it, but I, I measured my seam allowance on the other side. And then I just fold in my envelope or my opposite sides and then I fold up the bottom and press that down with my hand. I trim off any excess and I round the two corners that needed rounded. And then here's where I go in and press over the, the edges for a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Because of the backing, you don't have to seam the side. I did, I wanted the look of the seam, but it's not going to fray with that backing in between there. Uh, and then to secure the, the seam down, I just go in with my Wonder Clips, also an Amazon purchase, and I hold the seam down with my Wonder Clips. 
Now here, I'm just showing you a few different ways that you could fold down those rounded corner pieces to get that rounded effect. And then you just wanna press them real good with your iron and hit them with a wonder clip. Once everything's clipped down, we're going to head over to my sewing machine. I'm just going to run a straight stitch the whole way around the center of the seam. Once I get to the corners, I use the dial on the side of my sewing machine to walk the needle around that curve. I'm not gonna lie, in the end you'll see it wasn't the most perfect around the curve, but that's okay, it kinda adds a little to the rusticness. Then I want to make sure that the two points opposite of each other stay together. So again, I use my dial and walk a seam back and forth across where the two corners that weren't rounded meet. So after this bit, I did lose some footage of me putting it together. I used the no sew seam iron on stuff that you can get in the sewing section just about anywhere and some of the Aileen's permanent fabric glue to fold up that bottom that's with the rounded corner. Then I fill the bottom with some tissue paper and then I take a piece of white pool noodle and cut the ends at an angle and place it down inside the envelope, which adds a little bit of stability. Then I go in with some spring florals that I had. <clears throat> I've used these many times before in other decor pieces that I have made or put together before. And the pool noodle just allows me the convenience to push them down in and then they hold their place in the arrangement. Once I'm happy with how I have the flowers arranged, I go in with these snack sacks that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I have these sack bunnies, and then I have another set of sack bunnies, and then I have these candy sack carrots. And I just shove them full of the Dollar Tree shopping bags, the plastic bags, and then I tie them in a little bow at the top and place them down inside the envelope. Originally, I was going to use the snack sack bunnies with the ears, but in the end, I felt that the snack sack with the twine that you tie and the top makes it look like the bunny ears was a little, little bit more cuter and stood out a little bit more. You can let me know what you think in the comment section below. Would you have used the other bunnies? or would you also have used the same snack sack bunnies that I used? Boy, that becomes a tongue twister after so long. To get the bunny to stay on the outside of the envelope, I go in with the tea needle and just press it through the back of the bunny and then into the pull noodle. Well, we're coming to the end of the video. If you like this craft, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section. And if you don't know what to say, just leave me a bunny emoji because when you subscribe, like, and comment on my videos, it will help my channel to grow. So if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and when the bell appears, Click on it so you can choose to be notified every time I upload a video.